Good day, everybody. It's me, Michael Anthony Giudicissi. Welcome to All Things Billy the Kid. And uh, the last episode where we investigated some potentially new, not even new, uh, but uh, other picks of Billy. Big hit. Lots of questions. Um, lots of opinions. All good. And uh, so what happened is there's some more research that came along. That's one of the great things about at least being open to different ideas is that when you put it out there, other people who have stuff to add sometimes come forward. Um, and so uh, that's exactly what happened with the picks that we're talking about. And in specifically, uh, let's talk about this pick. We'll call this uh, one Montano Billy, the Montano store. And uh, so you remember we talked quite a bit about this, too tall, too short, blah, 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 whatever. Okay, uh, there's, a, there's a researcher that works behind the scenes. His name is James, not James Townsend, who's also a researcher, but James works in front of the scenes. <laughs> uh, this is a different James. And I think James relatively prefers to remain anonymous, probably doesn't want to get involved in the craziness of the Billy the Kid world again, where people start screaming and yelling and name calling and doing whatever else they do. Uh, but James has been diligently working behind the scenes and feeding me information. And so he's going to remain as James the Researcher. <laughs> okay, JTR. When this uh, photo went up, James emailed me and uh, he had some correspondence and uh, said, hey, Michael, here's what I think about this photo. And here's what I know about it based on my research. So first things first, there was a mistake in the last video in that Steve Cedarwall's original post named the photographer Tom, T-O-M-B, Linson. And it's actually Tom Linson. Okay. So Tom Linson, not Tom Linson. And his first name is James. Uh, so got caught up there, whatever. Okay. So James Tomlinson, actually quite a bit is known about him. And before we get to the photos, I wanted to share some of the articles that James sent me, which I uh, thought were, you know, very cool. Um, and if I can find out where I am, here I am. <laughs> uh, if I can find out there, uh, I'll get some of these articles so you can look at them. One of the things that I thought was really fun was uh, this one from Saturday, November 4, 1882. And it's from uh, the uh, Lincoln County Leader newspaper. And it's I think it's easy for, it's definitely, def def uh, I can't speak today. It's definitely easy for me to kind of forget about everybody else after Billy kind of passed through, right? So when Billy was done with the Lincoln County War, you know, what happened to Dolan? Eh, you know, who really cares? And those kind of things. But this is a uh, the regular people's ticket. So this is a uh, for an election. And here's what the article or the uh, the advertisement says. Here's the regular people's ticket. Delegate for Congress of Valencia County, Tranquilino Luna, Tranquilino Luna, Tranquil, slow, easy. So like little easy. It's like easy. He was the easy E of his time. Um, but look at council. Again, I get that this is probably just a total coincidence. And this is a very common name. But look, John Miller for council. John Miller, ever heard that name before? I have. He's buried out in Prescott, Arizona, and was thought to be Billy the Kid. I don't believe this is the same John Miller, but for certain, I know that John Miller's history in New Mexico and where and when he was, Rama Zuni, is not all that well documented until 10, 15 years later. I don't think it's the same John Miller, but who knows? It's a very common name, but kind of enticing. Um, Florencio Gonzalez, uh, I think, was a captain of the, or at, at least one of the Hispanic regulators. But there for sheriff, James A. Tomlinson, running for sheriff, November 4, 1882. So we know this guy existed. We know he existed in Lincoln County. Will Dallin, Dallin's Mills, for probate judge. 
And look at probate clerk. This was the one that really caught my eye. Samuel R. Corbett. Sam Corbett was uh, John Tunstall's storekeeper. And, you know, you kind of feel bad for Corbett, like Tunstall's killed, the store gets uh, occupied by Brady, the regulators wrestle it back, but eventually, you know, Dolan buys the store, like the store never reopens under McSween or any of the regulators' uh, management, like <laughs> under new management, Dick Brewer's mercantile, uh, but Sam Corbett was without a job, and here's Samuel Corbett running for probate uh, clerk of Lincoln County. Isn't that cool? So Corbett went on, kept on keeping on. Uh, keep, Yeah, I think that's the way to say it. Um, I always picture him, you know, with the starched cuffs and the shopkeeper's little vest and that kind of thing. And uh, he moved on. Um, another interesting name, and again, pretty common, Arcadio Size. Size. Why is that familiar? Well, that is who we, but that's the last name that we believe of Isadora Saez, who became Isadora Miller from Anton Chico, New Mexico. Uh, if that's correct, probably some familial relationship between Arcadio Saez and Isadora, and there's a John Miller on the on the, the ballot as well. Just uh, interesting things probably mean nothing, but when you talk about these, some researcher may pick it up and uh, may run with it. So there you go. Uh, that's one of the uh, articles. I thought that, that one was neat. Uh, let's see. Uh, we've got the Lincoln County leader. Oh, here's another one. Uh, just an advertisement. J.A. Tomlinson, dealer in drugs and medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dealer in drugs. He wouldn't put that in the paper today. White Oaks Avenue. So he had a store in White Oaks. We'll talk more about that. And the Las Vegas Gazette, Tucson Mining Company has filed articles of incorporation in the office of the Secretary of the Territory. Incorporators of the company are blah, 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 blah. And uh, Captain Joseph Lee, James A. Tomlinson. This guy... Tomlinson was a businessman. He was a photographer. Um, he was a uh, probate judge. He was respected. I don't get the sense that he would do something underhanded for money just based on who, who he was publicly. Uh, and that will be important later when we talk about why would he write Billy the Kid's name on the back of this photo. Uh, the company has capital stock of 200000 thousand dollars and will operate principally in Lincoln County. 200k is a lot of scratch back then. I don't remember the multiplier. Somebody uh, gave it to me at some point, you know, episodes ago, but uh, that's a lot of money. $200,000. That was uh, that was a king's ransom. So some interesting things here uh, about James Tomlinson. So here's some information that uh, was fed to me by James. Let me get uh, this out of here. I'm back. Look at that. Um, here's uh, a few things that we know more about James Tomlinson. The picture was absolutely taken in Lincoln, according to James. The old building is the Montano store, which we know, and still standing in Lincoln. We know that as well. That's good. Just uh, it's good to have a backup there. Um, I feel just behind the horse, you can see part of a wall and a sign on the ground. Well, that's true. We see the Adobe wall. In fact, I'll go back to the photograph now so you can see that for yourself. Uh, stand by. Do, 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 do. This is all going to come full circle here. So you can see the Adobe wall and you can see the sign that says store. You can't see what the first word is, except James says, I think it says drugstore. I feel that this was the drugstore run by James A. Tomlinson. Tomlinson first came to the Las Vegas area, 1877. In January 1878, he moved to Lincoln and practiced medicine. 77, he arrives in Las Vegas. January 78, he arrives in Lincoln. If this is a picture of Billy the Kid, and I think it is, 
with a caveat. Uh, but if this is a picture of Billy the Kid, January 1878 is just prior to the outbreak of the Lincoln County War. That doesn't mean this was taken in January because it appears Tomlinson stays in Lincoln from 78 until 1880 when he moves to White Oaks. And he establishes a uh, drugstore in White Oaks. And then 1884, he moves back to Lincoln and stays in Lincoln from 84 until 1890. It is said he operated his drugstore between 84 and 1890 in Lincoln, New Mexico. This is James, the researcher. I feel the picture may have been taken during this time. If it was taken during this time, then it is not William H. Bonney, because he was dead or on the run with the Yaki Indians or living in Rama or Zuni or something else. But it wouldn't be Billy the Kid uh, simply because he was not around. But Tomlinson is in White Oaks, which is not far from Lincoln. And he's a photographer. I mean, he certainly could have come to town at any point, 78, 79, 80 and taken this photo of Billy the Kid. And Billy was in and out of Lincoln a number of times during that time. So you've got this uh, uh, guy that we believe took the picture. I mean, there's every reason to believe that James Tomlinson took this picture. Somebody wrote Billy the Kid on the back. We don't know for sure that that's Tomlinson, and we're chasing down that writing so we can compare it to a signature, a known signature from Tomlinson, and see if the handwriting matches up. But why, if it is him, if it is Tomlinson, and if he does write Billy the Kid on here, why would he lie about it? For money? I mean, were pictures of Billy the Kid worth $2 million back then? No. I mean, none whatsoever. What would be the point of deceiving people about having a picture of a guy who wasn't really all that famous. I mean, Billy wasn't very famous in 78, 79, even 80 until he escapes jail. So I don't know why you fake a picture of him when you're a contemporary. Afterward, yeah, I can see that. But during the time that Billy's there, it just doesn't make any sense. So you look at this picture, we've got that. I'm gonna put this one off to the side. And I'm going to show you another photograph. And this is a well-known photo. Uh, let me, I need to, uh, I guess I can do it this way. Actually, I want to have more dramatic effect when I do this. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, I really want to hide this this photo for now. Okay, so now I'm going to show you another photo. This photo says it's taken in Pecos, Texas, 1880, an old town on the banks of the Pecos River. This one is more familiarly known, familiarly known as the Billy Fiddle picture. Let's have a look. All right. If you look in the back, there's a young man holding a fiddle and playing it hot. <laughs> the devil went down to Pecos. Let's see who the identification is. And I can't even tell you who this identification is by. Jim Markham, Charles Dixon, left to right in the back row. Bowers. I think it was Joe Bowers, actually, because I think he was involved in the Lincoln County War. Unidentified as man number four. Number five, Billy the Kid, holding a fiddle. Number six, Jesse Evans. Number seven, Luke Short, known outlaw. Number eight, unidentified. And number nine, John Abels. Now, I think John Abels would actually be John Abel. Why would John Abel be uh, important to the description here? Well, John Abel, married to later in life, Martile Abel, one of the five people who signs an affidavit that says Brushy Bill Roberts was Billy the Kid. If that's John Abel, and if that's Billy the Kid, then 
it certainly establishes that they knew each other. It does not establish that Martile Abel knew them, but uh, for certain it establishes that John does. So before we go any further, Jesse Evans, we don't have even one documented photo of Jesse Evans. And so somebody obviously does the, uh, you know, does the, the uh, what you would call it, the, the comparison and says it's him, but we, we can't prove that. I mean, there's nothing that can prove that. The one thing you can say is that this guy, if it's Jesse Evans, certainly looks older than this guy, which is Billy the Kid. And Jesse Evans was maybe 10 years older, if memory serves me uh, correctly. So uh, maybe we do have an image of Jesse Evans. The problem, though, the problem, uh, and I'm gonna, this is going back to James's research. This picture was said to have been taken in 1880 in Pecos, Texas. It was said to belong to Martile Abel. See, it's Abel, not Abel's. There are a number of Abel's and Abel in East Texas. Uh, to this day, they, I just sold my house out there, and I had a neighbor whose last name was Abel. Uh, uh, here's the thing. Uh, Mar in researching John Abel and visiting with some family members, John was not in this area or the Pecos area in 1880. This photo here that you're looking at is dated 1880. That's supposed to be John Abel. But based on the research that James has done, John Abel was not anywhere near Pecos, Texas, which casts a little bit of doubt on his identification and may maybe all of them. Except here's one thing I want you to look at. I don't know about you, but I see virtually the same guy. I mean, I'm willing to say it's the same person. The hat profile is similar, likes to wear the rounded sombrero hat. The face is a little long. It's thinner, rounder in the chin. The eyes, I mean, I, again, everybody sees what they want, but I look at the picture on the right which is the Montano photo and the picture on the left, which is the Billy, the kid fiddle photo. And I see the same guy. And this guy is in Lincoln because, because the Montano photo was taken in Lincoln. And this guy was involved with people uh, who were absolutely part of the Lincoln County war uh, and, and could have known Billy, the kid, who is this guy? Is the question anybody? I don't know is the answer. And if James is right, and that the Montano store picture was taken 1884 after, it cannot be Billy the Kid. But it's certainly a kid who looked a lot like Billy and was in the area. Is there another Billy the Kid? I hearken back to the late, great Stan Mortenkin. Uh, some of you who knew Stan, he was a researcher, um, researcher of many photographs, mostly about Billy the Kid. And Stan sadly passed. I think it was earlier this year. I don't think it was last year. Um, but Stan always held that there were multiple Billy the Kids. Now, not just, uh, you know, Billy Claiborne being called Billy the Kid, but that there were a number of people that were called Billy the Kid and really uh, detracted from the focus of who William H. Bonney was. This guy is named Billy the Kid by the guy that took the photograph, James Tomlinson. This guy is called Billy the Kid by somebody who identified people in the photograph. And James, the researcher, believes this photo was also taken by Tomlinson. Where was it taken and when was it taken and why is the same kid with this long face and this sombrero showing up in the same photograph? 
time after time. Now I'm not adding the card playing photograph. We'll save that for another episode, but there's another picture I believe of this guy, the same guy. And it's in the famous one that people say is Billy and three of the regulators playing cards in a staged kind of event, staged photograph. I don't know. I think there's something here. I don't know what the something is. I don't think Billy the Kid lived on past 1881. And if he did, by 1884 or later, he was in his uh, mid-20s. And this guy, to me, just looks, especially the Montano photo, looks younger. Doesn't look like he's in his mid-20s. He looks like a kid. Is there another Billy the Kid? Is that why there were sightings around? You know, I, I served dinner to Billy the Kid. I saw him down in Mexico. I saw those kind of things. Were all those people telling the truth, except it's a different Billy the Kid? And the William H. Bonney that we know of, the classic Billy, was shot and killed in Fort Sumner. But here's another Billy the Kid roaming Lincoln. Maybe they ne neglected, <laughs> conveniently neglected to say, oh, no, not that Billy. This was another Billy was a young kid and hung around Lincoln and had a scrunched up long face and wore sombreros and rode tiny little ponies. I don't know, but there's more research to be done here to figure out who this guy is, if he's not William H. Bonney, because he shows up too often for us to just discount him as being nobody. All right. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that. I would love to hear what you think about that. Um, also, by the way, some of the research for James Tomlinson comes from Lucas Spears and his group, his Facebook group, Billy the Kid Country. Um, and uh, you can see, in fact, Lucas had a post today, 1880. Tomlinson was 37 years old born about 1843 in Ireland, living in White Oaks in 1880, dwelling number 11, white male, head of household, he's married, occupation is a druggist. Uh, he was a private in, uh, he was a private. <laughs> it doesn't say he was veteran. I'm assuming that would be the Civil War, but it doesn't say where, where he served. And, uh, oh, he enlisted in 1864, discharged 1865. Company G um, still doesn't say what his unit was. But in any event, uh, he did serve and uh, looks like he served during the height of the war. So there you go. All right. So that's one mystery for you to take on for today and to figure out and collectively put all your brain power and research power together to figure out who this scrunched face guy is but there's one more thing remember our friend christopher from the great white north of canada well christopher <clears throat> sent me something that i also wanted to uh, share with you and i found this um, interesting i had not heard it before and if i did i certainly forgot so i want to share this and this uh passage comes from mark lee gardner's great book to hell on a fast horse so let me share this with you. And I'll read you the part that's of interest to me. Michael Cosgrove, the Las Vegas mail contractor, pushed through the crowd. This is in Las Vegas when Billy and Rudabaugh and Billy Wilson, when they're all stopped at the train station, pushed through the crowd carrying four bundles under his arms. They contained new suits of clothes for the prisoners. And the Irish-born Cosgrove remarked that he wanted to see the boys go away in style. One more time, just so you get it. Billy is captured by Garrett. They're taken to Fort Sumner. They get on a train and they stop in Las Vegas. That's where the big showdown with Sheriff Romero is, etc. But as they're boarding the train on their way to Santa Fe, Michael Cosgrove, the Las Vegas mail contractor, pushes through the crowd carrying four bundles of clothes under his arms. They contain new suits, clothes for the prisoners, and the Irish-born Cosgrove remarked that he wanted to see the boys go away in style. 
big deal, right? Maybe not. Why? Does the name Michael Cosgrove ring a bell? I know for some of you serious researchers, it does. Michael Cosgrove just happened to be in Las Vegas, where he was the mail contractor, just happened to be there on the day that Billy, Garrett, Rudabaugh, Wilson, when they're all being brought in, they're going to be shipped to Santa Fe for processing, and then they're going to go to trial. The trial that ultimately is going to cost Billy his life. Michael Cosgrove buys Billy a new suit and, and you know sends him off in style. Michael Cosgrove was also in Fort Sumner on the night of July 14th, 1881, as one of the and is one of the people that was said to have seen Billy's body the next morning before it was buried. The mail contractor from Las Vegas was in Fort Sumner the one night that Billy was there. Garrett said he only is there three times, and this was the last time. Cosgrove was in Fort Sumner. Probably just a coincidence, but a little odd, a little eerie. Does Cosgrove get in the good graces of Billy by giving him a suit, giving his friends a suit? You know, giving him a little, hey, we're Irish, you know, come on, we stick together. And then he's there when Billy's killed. I don't know how far, let me do, I'll, I'll figure it out for you as we speak. How far it is, Fort Sumner, New Mexico, to, let's, Las Vegas, New Mexico. Hundred and eleven miles on today's roads. Now that's not an unheard of distance to travel, and maybe the uh, the mail uh, that uh, is in the district uh, for Fort Sumner would run through Las Vegas. That makes sense to me too. There's a train stop there. It just seems unusually coincidental that Cosgrove. This guy who's now known and has done a favor for the kid is also in Fort Sumner the night he's shot and killed. And there's two possibilities. Well, one possibility is just a coincidence. The other possibility is Cosgrove was trying to help the kid, right? He's a he's a federal mail carrier, right? He knows he's talking to everybody. He's everywhere. Maybe he's trying to help Billy head off Garrett because he thought so much of him as a fellow Irishman. And he just happened to be there scouting for Billy and Billy just walked into the wrong place at the wrong time, or he was set up. A darker, more nefarious explanation would be maybe Cosgrove got in good with Billy by giving him a suit to stand trial in and earned his trust enough to lure him back to Fort Sumner because Kind of universally across the board, people believe that Pat Garrett's version of how Billy was killed doesn't hold water. Many, many, many people believe that Pat Garrett did kill Billy, but not in the way he said, and that Billy had to be lured to Fort Sumner and into that Maxwell house or the hallway. Well, who would be better to lure Billy in there than a guy who had already had established himself as a friend? Michael Cosgrove. It needs more research. It could be nothing. But when I saw the passage in Mark Lee Gardner's book, To Hell on a Fast Horse, the name Michael Cosgrove just jumped out at me as one of the people that identified Billy's body just because he happened to be there. The night Billy was killed, a one in a million shot in the dark, and the Las Vegas mail contractor was there. All right. So hope you enjoyed this episode. And we have the big live uh, Billy the Kid live show, <laughs> big, on Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, 5 Mountain, 4 Pacific, 2 a.m. UK. I mean, I don't know what time it is. Uh, you'll have to do the math. But please, if you can, join in. Just go to the YouTube channel. You'll, you'll see the 
the window, hey, going live in five minutes or something, chat will be open. You can submit your questions, your concerns, your uh, your answers, your opinions, whatever, anything. Let's have some fun with it. Um, and uh, I am uh, today was supposed to be the Bonita, Arizona trip, but I had some uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Uh, I had some technical issues, I guess, uh, which have been ironed out. So tomorrow, Bonita, Arizona, and the marking of the grave of Windy Cahill. So we'll bring you that uh, video next week and uh, more good stuff uh, coming up. So thanks for joining me for All Things Billy. I appreciate you. Smash, hit, bang, crunch the like button. That would be really helpful because when you do that, it it tells YouTube, oh, these people watched it and liked it. Let me show it to other people who might watch and like it. So that's the best thing you could do. Subscribe. And uh, I appreciate you all. Have a great day. See you next time on All Things Billy the Kid.